the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and also, also with you. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The, the Lord, Lord is risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Welcome to you wherever you are. We know that there's a wide group of people joining us not only from our parish but from outside the parish bounds. So wherever you are, you are welcome and together we form a spiritual uh, communion. Uh, today we are, are celebrating the fifth Sunday of Easter and uh, we begin with the Collect for Purity. Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all, all hearts, hearts are, are open, open, all, all desires, desires known, known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Are hidden. Cleanse, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your, of your Holy Spirit, Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. name. Through Christ our Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, Lord have, have mercy, mercy upon us. us. And write both these your laws in our hearts, we, we beseech you. you. Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. Give us grace to love one another and walk in the way of his commandments, who lived and reigned with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now we listen to Holy Scripture. A reading from the book of the Acts of the Apostles. Then an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home, seated in his chariot. He was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. And he asked, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I unless someone guides me? and he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. 
Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was like this. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter. And like a lamb, silent before its shear, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, About whom, may I ask you, does the prophet say this, about himself or someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down to the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. And together we say the words from Psalm 22. From you comes my praise. In the, in the great, great congregation, my vows I will pay before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall worship before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. To him, him indeed shall all who sleep in the earth bow down. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust, and I shall live for him. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying that he has done it. A reading from the first letter of John, chapter 4, beginning at the seventh verse. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the anointed sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God if we love one another. God lives in us and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God and they abide in God. So we have known and believe the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, for fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters, are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. 
The commandment we have from him is this. Those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory, Glory to, you, to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burnt. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit, and become my disciples. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to, to you, you Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. In today's Gospel lesson, Jesus uses an illustration which would have had all of his hearers nodding in recognition. As usual, he uses images from their everyday life experience in their time and place. He speaks about vineyards and vines. I have lived much of my life in climates much too cold to know about vines and vineyards. It was really only the last couple of decades of my life, after having moved to the Diocese of Niagara, and in particular the Niagara Peninsula, that I could really appreciate the images of the vineyard. In my last parish, I could ride out on my bicycle and in the same bike ride could see rows of vineyards and fruit trees in blossom, apple, cherry, and peach. And I would think, God is so good and gives so abundantly. I have related much of my experience about gardening and pruning and grafting before, but it fits the gospel, so I will relate it again. Now, I appreciate good gardens, and I know plenty of our parishioners are excellent gardeners, but I also know that I'll probably never be a good one myself. I explained once before how when my maternal grandmother, who could and did grow absolutely anything, she had the a uh, proverbial green thumb. I remember her teaching my brother and me how to weed the garden. Well, you see, the problem was I felt sorry for the weeds. Still to this day, whenever I get the chance, which isn't often, to weed the garden, my sense of accomplishment is always tinged with a hint of regret for the unwanted green refuse simply cast aside and thrown into the compost bin. And if you know my feelings about weeding, you can imagine what the concept of pruning did to my tender psyche. Now, between the ages of 11 and 14, we lived in England, where my father was teaching at a Royal uh, Air Force Staff College. We lived in a magnificent house with two sets of French doors, that opened onto a beautiful back garden which was filled with many rose beds. There were mo more rose beds in the front garden. And my father, like most of the officers at the staff college, hired a gardener to care for them all. Now, Mr. Jenkins was very old and very bent over, and he seemed very, very kind. 
and he would show my brother and me how he pruned the roses and cared for the rest of the garden. He seemed kindly, I thought, but he certainly was vicious with a set of pruning shears. And I remember after he watched me cut about a quarter of an inch off the end of a couple of branches, he explained to me that pruning was good for the plant. It allowed for it to flourish and to produce more flowers, far more flowers, short-term pain for long-term gain. Now, when Luke was writing the book of Acts and John was writing the Gospel of John, the church was going through persecution. Many were imprisoned and tortured and executed just for being Christians. Many believers believed that God was in control of all of their lives, and many found it very difficult to understand how they could be experiencing so much evil when they had such a strong faith in God. Many would have been tempted, and many did, renounce their faith, or they would simply keep it or would be tempted to keep it just a personal faith and not to proclaim it publicly. It is within this context that we must hear the story of the vineyard. This image of the vineyard was one which was very familiar with the Hebrews. In much of the Old Testament, the children of Israel were compared to a vineyard which was tended to by God. In today's Gospel lesson, Jesus tells his followers that God will prune the faithful to make them produce even more fruit. I think that the early followers of Jesus who were so persecuted understood that it was through their suffering that they became even stronger in their faith. And I well remember my other grandmother, my father's mother, explaining to me how her great faith did not grow when everything in her life was going smoothly. It had grown in the struggles of her life, which were many. And I remember at the, our time at the Royal Air Force Staff College, I'm reminded of the motto of the RAF and of the Commonwealth Air Forces, including the Canadian Air Force. The motto is per ardua ad astra, which means through struggle to the stars. Many people here know this truth about struggle and growth. Still, many others find that life's challenges cause them to doubt their faith. And some seem to lose their faith in adversity. How can the bad in our life possibly cause us to be more fruitful? We can only understand it if we experience the other aspect of gardening which we hear in today's Gospel. More gardening lessons. Mr. Jenkins showed my brother and me how to graft the shoot of one rose onto another rose bush. He especially liked to do this if there was something wrong with the root of a rose bush and the rose bush was dying. And he would take one of the shoots or several of the shoots and graft them onto a healthy rose bush. And the, the new shoot would continue to grow and flourish even as the old bush died. We had several kinds of rose bushes with different colors of flowers coming off the same rose bush. And in fact, we even had a very small kind of decorative apple tree with a whole bunch of little green apples on one side and a whole bunch of little red apples on the other. Jesus tells us that he is the true vine and that we have been grafted into him. It is he who provides us our spiritual life. It is he who gives us spiritual food that we might not only survive, but even thrive in adversity. 
and produce fruit. The way in which we are grafted into Jesus, the true vine, is by virtue of our baptism. That is how we become Christians. It is through baptism that we become full members of the body of Christ. Remaining rooted in Christ is the only way in which we can live out our baptismal covenant. It is not something that we can do by ourselves. It is only in this way that we can flourish. And it is why we are baptized into a church community. Just as a vine has many branches, so we are grafted into a community with many members and we support each other and are all fed in Christ. Now this year has been especially difficult in trying to feel connected, to feel that we are joined into a single body. I think that there are many who perhaps feel that they have been like a branch that has been cut off from their root system. We have been doing all that we can to try to help people still feel connected through all of the virtual services that we are offering. We've almost tripled the number of our worship services each week during this pandemic, moving from the three in-person worship services we did a week to eight a week now. We have reached out through our telephone ministry, Zoom, FaceTime, and many other means. But I'm sure that this year has felt, for many of us, like a whole year of pruning. I pray that each one of us will remain firmly rooted in Christ. Even as we seem to be scattered, we are joined together spiritually into the true vine who is Christ who provides us our sustenance and our nourishment and who will allow us to flourish and to produce fruit even as we suffer from being apart. May we celebrate even though we are scattered knowing we are joined spiritually together to Christ, the true vine, and may we all bear much fruit. Amen. And now, let us confess the faith of our baptism in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, he was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In the silence of our hearts or in spoken words, we give thanks for the gift of this day and offer our prayers to you, O Lord, in peace and in confidence. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, prayer. our prayer. Make your church a worthy temple for your presence. We pray for Susan, our bishop, and all clergy, both here and around the world. May they continue to follow the path of the disciples of Christ as they minister to people everywhere. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lighten the darkness of the world with the light of Christ. Give water of life to all who thirst for hope and direction in their human journey. Lord Jesus, you approach us 
yet we miss you in the poor, the hungry, the stranger, and those who have no shelter. Forgive us the poverty of our welcome and give us eyes to see you. Let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, prayer. our prayer. Grant that we and all those we love shall always be ready to respond to your call, to help each other or those as yet unknown to us. Bless those in our community who have recently come to faith and strengthen them to grow in love and obedience day by day. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Creator God, you provide us with abundant life and a natural beauty in our world. Yet we have claimed what is not ours and we have despoiled your gifts. Help us to learn the wisdom of the first peoples of the land to care for the sacredness of your creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Bring healing to those who are sick in body or mind or spirit. We lift up to you those whose spirits are weary, and we remember especially those who have asked for our prayers. Jane Ross, Jean Griffin, Jane Gatke, Alec Dickerson, Carolyn, Christopher, Jeff Smith, Bernice Peterson, Jim Glass, Linda Sutton, Melanie and family, Adam Houston, Cheryl Clark, Mary Sherwood, Star Barrett, Allie, Lynn Aitkins, Pat and Les Matthews, Jody Cocker, Corinne Newell, Marion Conlon, Shirley, Habib, Vic Burden, Gerald Taylor, Edith Walsh, Braden Bauer, Brenda Brain, Diane Chandler, Betty George, and others known to us alone. We pray also for residents, family, and friends in long-term care. Enfold them in your gentle love. We pray for all we hold in our hearts, and may they all have faith in your steadfast love. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. In the glow of the Paschal candle, we remember those who have died, especially Merle Bright and others who live in our hearts. Grant to them that they shall indeed see the face of Christ and live with him forever. May light perpetual shine upon them. Comfort all who mourn and sustain them with your loving grace in the dark days and weeks ahead. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, prayer. our prayer. O Lord, open our minds that we may understand. Work in our wills that we may answer your call and obey. Kindle our hearts that we may follow in the way of the cross. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the love of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to, to the, the glory, glory of, of your, your name. name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. 
and, and also with you. you. So by way of announcement, I just want to remind you that there are several things that we do by Zoom. I mentioned uh, a little bit of that in my sermon. So uh, we've got things to do. There's one, two, three, four, there's five different things we do by Zoom every week. So on Mondays at 1.30, our Deacon Sheila leads a Bible study. Uh, Tuesdays at 10 o'clock is the Knitters and Friends. Uh, Wednesday at 2 p.m. is our Contemplative Prayer. Uh, Thursday at 10 a.m. is the Outreach Committee. And Saturdays uh, is the Men's Faith and Fellowship. Saturdays at 9 a.m. Uh, also, uh, we had Terry speak to us uh, with a snowy message last week, and we thought just in case some people didn't uh, see that service last week, we wanted him to uh, give it again. So uh, here's Terry now. Good morning. For any of you who don't know me, my name is Terry Raybold, and I am the Deputy Rector's Warden at St. Luke's Anglican Church, Burlington. I know it has been a difficult year for all of us. We've been asked to stay home as much as possible, keep our distance, wear masks, wash our hands, and not to touch our face. All of this seems contrary to our innate need to socialize with each other, to give hugs, to use facial expression, to communicate when words won't do, to get our hands dirty together, and to rub that tear of joy or grief from our eyes. We have all been affected by this long isolation in many different ways. As a parish, we reflect the community in hardships faced, lives lost, grief felt, and milestones observed. Our new normal includes words that we now hear too often. Virus, cases, variants, spread, waves, lockdown. Yet although we often feel alone, we are not alone. As a community of faith, we have come together in new and exciting ways, and many of our ministries continue to thrive. Our Easter service alone reached more than 300 people. We have evening prayer together every night of the week, Zoom coffee hours, Bible studies, and meetings. Our reach has become viral. People confined to their homes are looking for something to hold on to, a faith that will give them strength and courage. While we may not be able to worship in person, the pandemic has allowed us to learn new ways to worship that do not include our traditional building and gathering. Our clergy and wardens are working diligently to manage the upkeep and finances of our church. We give thanks for your generosity and faithful giving throughout 2020. And as most of you know, we ended the year in a sound financial condition. At the same time, we were aware that 2021 would probably present continued challenges. During 2020, the federal government wage subsidies helped to offset our loss of revenue from our usual fundraisers. With a significant decrease in these subsidies in 2021, we find that our financial position is not as sound as previously thought. In the past, many parishioners gave special offerings on Easter Sunday we ask you to prayerfully consider doing so during the season of Easter as we face the challenges and unknowns in the days ahead. Thank you. And also I want to say uh, the diocesan service is available each week on, our on the diocesan YouTube channel. And please do um, remember to join us at 11 o'clock today at our Zoom coffee hour as well and all of the zoom links are available uh, either on the uh, online bulletin which is on our website uh, or else in the parish email which I send out each week but uh, you can always look for our online bulletin and our newsletter online by going to our website which is stlukesburlington.ca and then you can find them there
let us pray. Gracious God, you, you show, show us your, your way, way and give us your, your divine, divine light. light. May, May everything, everything we do be directed, directed by the knowledge of your truth. truth. We, we ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. 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 Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. Lift up your heart. We, we lift, lift them, them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to give, give our, our thanks, thanks and, and praise. praise. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. We give you thanks and praise for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us eternal life. Therefore, joining our voices with angels and archangels and the whole company of heaven, we sing our joyful hymn of praise to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the height. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the height. Holy and gracious God, Accept our praise through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on the night he was handed over to suffering and death, to bread, and gave you thanks, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This is my blood, which is shed for you. When you do this, you do it in memory of me. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, we offer you this bread and this cup, giving thanks that you have made us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon the offering of your Holy Church, gathering to one all who share in these sacred mysteries, filling them with the Holy Spirit, and confirming their faith in the truth, that together we may praise you and give you glory through your servant Jesus Christ. All glory and honor are yours, Father and Son, with the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Church. Amen. Amen. sacrifice for us. Therefore, Therefore let, let us, us keep, keep the peace. peace. Hallelujah. Dear friend, I invite you in this moment, whatever you may be, to receive Christ in communion with the saints and the gathering of God's people, unseen and yet present with us now. Let us pray. We receive you, Lord Jesus Christ, 
we welcome your presence in us and together proclaim our love for you with our hearts, minds, our souls, and our strength, with the saints we worship you, with the angels we adore you, with your whole church we proclaim your reign. Come to us and make us one in you. Amen. Amen. Christ our Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God, whose, whose power, power working in us can do infinitely more than, than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the Church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, Keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Alleluia. Alleluia. 